we're going to build our ideas and we're going to talk about taking all those cool licks and talk about ways that we can build these things and improvise. Let's start right in the key of C today. Okay. And or position to play in. Let's start with bending some strings and we're going to start really slow with what I have often called our whoopty and we're going to call this example number one for building our ideas. So the way that we're going to execute that is we're just going to take our time and we're not going to try to play it too quickly and we're not going to try to play it too distorted. We're just going to cruise through that and I'm going to start with a downstroke and I'm going to play that with an upstroke. We're going to add to that, right? We're going to try our second example. We're going to lay our first finger flat and I'm going to hit the high E string and I'm going to fret my C note in addition to that. Improvising comes from trusting your subconscious, so we're going to categorize these things in our mind as separate phrases and separate ways that we can mix all of them together. So this is number one, and this is number two. Now number three is going to include a pull-off pattern. Now this leads me to our first real lick that I feel is going to be a catalyst to helping us improvise and get to other parts of the guitar. And number three works good in any kind of fashion. We could play it very quickly, we could play it slowly, but right now we're just trying to play it smoothly and that's all that matters. And there's a lot of technique that's involved in that. So. Let's talk about how maybe I can mix these up. I'm going to go number two into number three into number one. Number three. Number one. And now I'm starting to mix these things together off of this. I'm going to call that, for all intents and purposes, a nice riff or lead bit that I can change every time I finish it. That's another way to look at this. I'm going to say, okay, well now when I do this, how am I going to resolve it, right? How am I going to end? Because maybe this note isn't what you're searching for. Within these core notes that I'm talking about, I have different ways that I can bookend or finish out my phrase that sounds just like this. So, separate from that, we're going to talk about these notes and here is option number one. I'm going to go just like this. And the technique behind that is very clear. I'm bending up to my G note. I stop the note, I fret my F, I go down to my E flat, and I hit my C. Now, listen to how cool that sounds when we add it to what we called number three. Now we're building these ideas, these things that were separated in our mind, and when we sat and practiced them, along to a jam track. Now we're molding them together. And again, we have this. Another way that we can end that is just like this. That's going to be my ender phrase. Now when I put that in conjunction with what we call lick number three, we have another phrase, and this is a good resolving note. Number one, into number two, into number three, that's example number one to end. And that's example number two to end. Now another way that we can end this, we're going to give you three really key ones to start with. And this is going to include that blues scale or that flatted fifth note. And what I'm going to do to execute this is I'm going to strike this note and I'm going to slide up and I'm going to slide back. And even that can take a little bit of practice. So look at how I slide here. I'm going from 10 up to 11, back to 10, and I'm going to pick 
is number eight. And I'm going to fret that note there. So that's a really nice little phrase, all into itself. And again, covered in the other part of the DVD. So if you have any questions on how to really apply that technique, if you should pull off or if you should pick, explore the options. But right now we're looking at how we can end lick number three and build the idea and keep going with our phrases. And when we mix them all together here, now I'll just go in no particular order. All of these now become ideas that we can really build together. Let me play that slowly. So I started with... them up in any kind of fashion. I used to do is I would take this approach and then I would take my favorite licks and I'd write them down on a piece of paper. I'd write down the number combos and I'd just mix them up over and over and over again against a jam track. And then eventually I would find ways to combine them that I felt comfortable with. But ultimately um, I might take notes out. I might apply my vibrato, you know, in my own way. But at that point I felt like I was getting more comfortable to improvise and improvise is just trusting yourself to let loose and go through with what you've spent your time, really focused time, to practice. So this lick right here, be it that it's so rooted in tradition and has so many good possibilities, is a nice lick that you can do and add things to at the end that'll really make you sound like a great blues player. And you can incorporate these other scales. And this is a core part of the scale where you can get good tone try to work on your bends and the way that you hold out your notes and from this I can go to high strings as well I could go anywhere so we'll talk about that in a minute but right now what I would say is you could take that and just that little bit of information and go to one of the jam tracks and try to work out those pieces <laughs> 